Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Well, welcome po rito sa ating uh, Tagalog service. At uh, alam nyo po, eh, talaga namang napakaganda ng ating series. Kaya po, ayan po yung aking panalangin at pag-asa na isa buhay po natin, yung tinatawag ni Lord na salt and light of the earth po tayo. Ayan po yung calling natin. At ngayon po, ito po yung ating ikaanim na bahagi or the sixth installment of this series, Salt and Light. Babasahin po natin Isaiah 65. Ito po yung ating uh, uh, panimulang passage. Dito magmumula yung ating diskusyon ng salita ng Diyos ngayong hapon. Okay? Kung may Biblia po kaya, kuhanin nyo po. Bagamat ito po yung Tagalog service, babasahin ko sa ESV, ang ating text. Isaiah 65 verses 17 to 20, ang ating panimulang babasahin. Anda na pa kayo? Verse 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. Manalangin tayo. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyong salita. Muli po namin ipinadadalangin, pinagdarasal na kami po ay mabuhay bilang salt and light. You have called us to live like, to live as the salt and light of the world. That's why we pray, God, that you give us the grace to be able to live as such. Kaya naman po ngayong hapon, Panginoon, hinihingi ko po na pagpalain mo po ang pangungusap ng iyong salita. Ano the preaching of the word and you speak to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Laking tuwa po namin nung yung barangay sa kabilang barangay eh papaalis na kasi Nilapitan niya po kami at la, apat po kaming magkakaibigan. Si Amboy, si Nelson, si Vic at ako. At iniimbita po kaming sumali sa isang liga ng basketball. Grade 4 po ako nun. At sabi nung barangay, siyempre may mga iba rin mga nakarinig na adult din doon sa aming street. Sa San Palok. Ang sabi ba naman nung barangay sa kabilang barangay, eh meron kaming liga, Mosquito Division, grades 3 to 5. Apat yung nasa team, pero 3 on 3. Kaya po, laking tuwa nung, namin nung kami pong apat ay isinali, inilista po niya kami. Kaya naman tuwan-tuwa kami. Wala po kaming ibang pangarap kundi mapasali lang. Kaya naman nung hanggang huling-huling laro namin, kami po'y talunan pero masaya kami <laughs> na kami po'y napasali. Ayun lang ang aming goal doon sa liga na yon. Mapasali kami. Pero alam niyo po, kung kukumpara mo sa ibang liga, lalong lalo na, for example, sa PBA, sa NBA, ang mga team doon, eh, sumasali sa mga ligang yan para mag-champion. Okay? Kaya naman, hindi nila kagaya kami. Kami, never kami nag-practice. Yung mismong laro namin ay yung pinaka-practice namin. Kahit mga individual na practice, eh yung bola nun, yung arrow. Natandaan nyo, yung mga kasing bata ko, yung arrow na bola, yung walang interior. Di mo malaman kung uh, malambot na bola o matigas na lobo. <laughs> Sakit sa kamay i-dribble. Pero pagka malalaking liga, kailangan nilang manalo ng first prize, iba yung kanilang pamumuhay. Nariyan yung bawat uh, individual player ay magda-diet. 
magpa-practice, magbubuhat ng weights, matutulog ng maayos. Ibang klase, pagka ang kanilang goal ay maging first prize winner. Kumpara sa amin na gusto lang namin mapasali, walang vision, walang goal, eh masaya na na magpakita eh. Pagka kami nga naglalaro eh, kahit tambak kami eh, o kaya, o ikaw naman, hindi ka pa nakakalaro eh, parang masayang masaya, kahit tambak na, makalaro lang eh, di ba? Pero sila iba. Talagang buong buhay nila ay kanilang uh, pinag-iigi para manalo yung, mapanalunan yung first prize sa liga. Ito pong illustration na ito ay may kinalaman sa ating binabasa ngayong hapon. Kasi nga, ang ating pinupuntirya ay yung, yung church o the people of God ay mamubuhay bilang salt and light. At yung isinasalarawan po rito sa text na ating binasa, what is being described here is actually imagery. Kaya nga, pagsasalarawan, marami nagdidebate, apocalyptic ba ito o hindi? Hindi ko na kayo gustong uh, maburden pa sa issue na yan. Pero ang bottom line po ng sinasabi rito ay change. Kito niyo naman, eh, merong image rin yung sinasabi rito, new heavens and new earth. And then yung mga description na ginamit. Di ba? Uh, the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Kasi ang, ang nire-refer dito, uh, what's being referred here is the creation as they knew it. As they knew it. During their time. Siyempre, pag sinabi natin yung cre- creation na alam nila, ay eh yung creation after Adam's fall. Of course, God made the creation. Sabi nga niya sa Genesis chapter 1, it is good. But Adam and Eve's sin brought fall into creation. Unang-una, siyempre, yung mga tao, yung fallenness natin, naging makasalanan tayo. At sinasabi nga dun sa Genesis chapter 3, di ba? kahit daw yung ground, yung lupa ay kiners. Kaya ang ating fall ay hindi lang personal or individual fall, hindi lang human fall, but comprehensive fall. Ika nga, buong mundo, buong nila lang ay nakurap. Ito po yung sinasabi rito. Doon sa Genesis 3, the former things, hindi na raw maaalala because of this new heavens and a new earth na sinasabi rito sa passage dito sa Isaiah. Tignan nyo pa rito sa verse 19, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping. Ayan, again, imagery po ito. Hindi po ito mga literal. Although, of course, mayroong mga naniniwala, literal din. Ako ay nag-agree doon sa pananaw na yon. Pero, sa future, okay, but not now, yung nangyayari ngayon, yung sinasabi nating change. Pero, sabi pa rito, pag, pag, uh, pagtutuloy pa, verse 20, No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days, for the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. Ibig sabihin talaga, ang, ang bottom line is change. There's what we call as the comprehensive redemption. Comprehensive redemption. At nabanggit ko nga, ako'y naniniwala na this is ongoing right now. Okay? Yung culmination po nito, eh, syempre, yung nabanggit sa Revelation 21. Verse 1, ayan na, yung last book of the Bible, yung Revelation. Na binabanggit doon yung new heaven and new earth. Pero ayun na yung culmination, sa end na ng history yun. 
But for the meantime, itong binabanggit dito, naniniwala ako na ang salita ng Diyos sinasabi, it's ongoing right now. It's changing. Pero marahil ang mga katanungan nyo, Pastor, bakit hindi namin nakikita yan? Kung sinasabi mo na ito'y nangyayari na, bakit baliktad ang nakikita namin sa mundo? O kaya, o kaya naman, wala man lamang ebidensya. Well, pag sinasabi niyo baliktad at walang ebidensya, eh buksan niyo ang inyong mga mata. Unang-una, alam niyo po, sabi nga natin, comprehensive redemption, marahil ang sunod na katanungan ninyo, eh kailan nagsimula yan? Kung sinasabi niyo ngayon yan, pastor. Eh ito po ay nangyari noong namatay sa krus at nabuhay ng muli ang Panginoong Jesus. Again, babalik tayo sa Panginoong Yesus. Babalik tayo sa good news niya. Eh, yan naman talaga ang pamantayan natin. Eh. Diyan tayo nagsisimulang nagkabagong buhay. Kaya nga, alam nyo yung Isaiah, eh, parang mga, pag binabasa natin yung mga teksto, parang mga bagang mga trailer ng isang sine. Pag pinapakita yung mga trailer, snippets ng mga interesting parts nung nung movie. Itong binasa natin dito, eh, syempre, bagamat hindi nabanggit yung Mesaya, eh, sa ibang bahagi ng Isaiah, nabanggit naman. Kagaya nung pinag-usapan natin yung Isaiah 53. Nandoon naman yung Mesaya. Pero alam nyo po, karugtong po ito doon sa sa gospel, sa nagawa ng Panginoong Jesus para sa ating benepisyo. Yung kanyang death and resurrection yung kanyang pagpapatawad na dumarating dahil sa kanyang sakripisyong ginawa para doon sa mga anak ng Diyos sa bahagi ng church. Alam niyo po ba kung bakit ko nasabi yan? Eh, alam niyo, itong uh, chapter 65 tsaka 66 ng Isaiah, eh, medyo kakam- magkakambal po yan. Synchronized po yung pinag-uusapan nila. By the way, 65-66. 66 the last chapter of Isaiah. Pero naalala ko tuloy yung number 67. Ngayon po ay April 18, Sunday. It is my, it, uh, my tata at inay's anniversary. 67th anniversary na po nila. <laughs> okay, happy anniversary po, tatay inay. Pero alam nyo, well, balik tayo rito sa <laughs> 65 at 66. Magkakambal po yan at sinasabi nga nila, magkasama yung kanilang pinag-uusapan. Kasi ang sabi rito sa 65 verse 1, ito ha, papakita ko sa inyo kung bakit tayo naniniwala na ongoing ito. At ba tayo naniniwala na nagsimula ito pagkatapos ng death and resurrection ng Panginoong Yesus. Sabi ba naman dito sa verse 1 ng chapter 65, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. Okay? I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. Verse 2, I spread out my hands all day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. Alam niyo po itong chapter 65, verses 1 and 2 ng Isaiah, eh, kinote po ito ni Apostol Pablo sa Romans chapter 10, verses 20 to 21. Ito po, yung sinasabi ni Propeta Isaiah rito, eh, yung uh, God was rejecting those who rejected His covenant, those who were unfaithful to the covenant. Kaya naman, kinote po ito ni Pastor, uh, I mean, ni Apostol Pablo sa Romans chapter 10. Yung mga ibang tao na binabagit ni Apostol Pablo, yung overconfident dahil sila ay galing sa isang ethnic group. Kaya naman yung sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo, eh, nabukas na yung blessing ni Lord sa mga iba't iba pang nasyon. Okay, we've been saying that it's always been multi-ethnic from the start. Pero yung large-scale invitation of nations to come into the blessings of the Lord, 
Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And nangyari po pagkatapos ng death and resurrection ni Lord Jesus, na nabukas po yung blessing of the gospel to many nations. At sabi nga natin, bagamat hindi lahat ng tao ay masisave, alam naman natin yan. Kasi yung iba naniniwala, regardless of your faith and your lifestyle, masisave ka. Hindi po tayo naniniwala ron. Kitang-kita yan sa Biblia, kitang-kita yan sa buhay na to, natin, sa aktual na buhay. Pero at least yung sinasabi ng Biblia, every nation will be represented. Naibukas po yan. Since that's the start, it's been multi-ethnic. But the door was widely open after the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eh siguro yung iba sa inyo nagtatanong, eh pastor, paano yung Israel? Replaced ba? Hindi po. As a people of God, hindi po replaced. Sabi kasi rito sa verse 8 ng Isaiah 65, Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, ayan, para bagang mga ubas, di ba? And they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servant's sake. Ayan po ang sabi ng uh, Panginoon. And not destroy them all. Okay, hindi naman lahat ay nireject. Yung mga unfaithful sa covenant. Nireject yun, of course. But by the grace of God, there are still some who were brought in. Hindi po replacement. Sabi rito sa verse 9, I will bring forth offspring from Jacob. Okay? And from Judah, possessors of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. Hindi po replacement. But addition yun nangyari. Mas marami pang mga ethnic groups Naniniwala nga tayo, every nation will be represented. Every ethnic group. May mga Pilipino, may mga Hapon, may mga Chinese, may, Afri- may African, may German, iba-iba po. Lahat po. Every ethnic group will be represented. Will be added. Okay? Kaya nga sabi ng, ng uh, Romans 11, eh, diba? the Gentiles are engrafted. Isinama po. Kaya yan po, naniniwala tayo, kaya natin binabanggit ito, eh ongoing. Kasi may mga sinabi, sabi rito sa chapter 65 na this is the, the, the post-resurrection age. Kaya itong uh, new heavens and new earth na binabanggit dito sa Isaiah is ongoing at wala po yung pinagkaiba dun sa sinasabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.17. Kasi kung sinasabi nyo, bakit napaka-ideal yung description dyan, pero hindi natin nakikita. Well, we're getting there. Ayan po ang masasabi ko. Yung tinatawag na, na gradualism. Kaya naniniwala tayo, slowly but surely, kumakalat yung ebanghelyo sa mundo. Amen? At sabi nga rin sa... Uh, sa Romans din eh, di ba? Yung, uh, y- the, the, the creation is longing for freedom from bondage to corruption. Di ba? <laughs> Kaya nga sinasabi natin, comprehensive redemption. Dahil darating po yan, unti-unti yan. Walang pinagkakaiba po yan doon sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Nung sinabi ron, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is, is gone, the new has come. Ngayon kayo po, lalo na yung mga mananampalataya, mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, alam niyo naman na yung inyong growth sa sanctification, ayan, ginagamit ako ng mga theological term. Yung ating growth as believers. Hindi naman po yan straight slope, straight line na slope. Ang pagka-describe nga natin dyan, para yung graph ng stock, ng stock market, di ba? Yung... Ang daming ups and downs. Diba? Kung titignan mo yung graph ng stock market, five years, ang daming ups and downs. And yet, kung, kung isu-zoom in mo sa, sa one week, ganun din ang laman ng one week. Para po yung individual salvation. Eh. Sa sanctification natin, habang tayo po lumalaki bilang mana ng palataya, same then It's not a straight line, slope going up. It could be like that graph. 
But praise God, it's the general direction is going up. Wala pong pinagkaiba yan sa individual redemption in the process of sanctification. Sinabi nga natin dun sa Romans, di ba? Yung tenses of salvation. Eh. We were saved. That's complete. We are being saved as believers. Yung ating sanctification, we're growing from glory to glory by the blessing of the Lord. And we will be saved. Yung tinatawag natin culmination. Kaya nga, uh, in reference to new heavens and new earth, yung culmination niya na makikita natin sa Revelation 21. Ba't huwag niyong itanong kung nasan yan? Lalo na kayo, mananampalataya. Eh ba't niyo hinahanap kung individual salvation niyo? Eh guri-guri yung, <laughs> yung graph. Ika nga eh. Hindi naman straight line yan. But thank God, the general direction is going up. Again, same thing here. Comprehensive redemption, we believe. Happen. By virtue of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's also ongoing. Kaya nga, pinag-uusapan natin salt and light, social responsibility, may kinalaman po yan. Nakakabit po yan dyan. Makikita natin mamaya. Pero ayan po yung ating binabanggit dito. Pero may sasabihin po ako patungkol dyan. Diba? Comprehensive fall, comprehensive redemption. The whole creation will be saved and will be changed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Si Lord po ang champion natin. Siya po ang magkukumpleto niyan. It's uh, regardless of whether we will participate or not. Kaya nga, kayo po'y iniimbitahan natin. Let's participate. Pero again, hindi po dependent yan sa gagawin ng mga believers. Si Lord kayang-kayang gawin yan. Kaya nga, sinasabi natin, kaya ni Lord yan. Eh bakit pa <laughs> tayo iniimbitahan mag-participate? Alam nyo, ang Panginoon na magkukumpleto niyan. Kaya nga, sinasabi natin kanina, kung naaalala niyo yung story ko, first prize ang ating binabanggit. Hindi mag-champion. Yung mga pananaw ng iba, eh, sy- syempre, sa NBA, yung pananaw. Pero tayo bilang mananampalataya, hanggang first prize lang tayo. Kasi ang champion talaga si Jesus. Eh. Pero, iba tayo mag-isip pagka meron tayong goal at vision na makamit yung first prize. Again, may distinction po yung sinasabi ko. Hindi tayo magcha-champion. Si Jesus lang ang champion. Whether we like it or not, whether we participate or not, Jesus will complete it. Huwag tayong maging mayabang na para bagang dependent sa atin. But that sense of fulfillment, yung first prize is to honor God. Bibigyan natin ng karangalan ng Panginoon. Ika nga ng 1 Thessalonians 4.1 The Lord God will be pleased diba? yung, uh, The Lord will be pleased Yung pleasure of God When we honor God Ayun yung first prize natin To honor God I hope that you, you take that as a, as a vision, as a goal as a, Like a big goal in life Di ba yung mga gusto manalo ng first prize, nag-wage, di ba natutulog ng maaga, o kayo yung diet, nagpa-practice, iba yung pamumuhay nila. Pag gusto nila makamit yung first prize, kesa yung napasali ka lang sa tournament. <laughs> Dahil kulang yung team <laughs> na nakalahok sa tournament, inimbita ka, eh, masaya na kayo na napasali lang. Pero may goal tayo, ma-honor si Lord. Ang totoo niyan, hindi naman nagkakalayo yan doon sa light of the world. Diba? Sabi nga doon sa Matthew 5.16, siguro buklatin nyo na lang mamaya yan. Diba? When, when we do our good works, being the light of the world, makikita raw ng ibang tao, kaya they will praise God. Mabibigyan ng karangalan ng Panginoong Diyos pag tayo ay namumuhay bilang ilaw at asin ng mundo. Ayan, nasa Matthew 5. Verses 13 to 16 yan. Basahin niyo po. Mamaya, makinig muna kayo. Kaya nga po si Jesus ang ating champion. Ang tanong, gusto mo ba makamit yung first prize? 
Ibang klaseng pag-iisip yan. Iba, may goal tayo. At kaya nga sinasabi natin si Jesus ang ating champion. Jesus is our champion. I just want to emphasize three things in relation to that truth. Unang-una, gospel confidence. Ayan. Parati natin sinasabi, preach the gospel. Saved by the gospel. Habit lang po natin yan. Pero yung gospel po, hindi po persona yan. The gospel itself cannot save us. But you know, when we say the gospel, is uh, we can be saved by the gospel, ibig pong sabihin natin yan. Kasi yung gospel, yung good news, yung ebanghelyo, points us to that person who actually saves us. And that's no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we say gospel confidence, alam niyo po, yung gospel confidence na sinasabi natin, alam natin kakalat po yan sa mundong ibabaw. Kumakalat po yan. Yung mga ibang nagsasabi na talunan ang church, eh, hiwala silang global perspective. Very localized yung kanilang pag-iisip. But you have to look at it in a global perspective. May mga bansang ngayon, eh, nagsisimulang mabuhay because of the gospel. Again, like for example, sabi nga nila, one of the fastest growing church, Christian church right now, when we say that, it's uh, the body of Christ is in Iran. Okay? Alam niyo po ba yun? Nasa Iran. Ang isa sa pinakamabilis lumaking church, and that's the capital C. Ika nga. Pero the gospel confidence, kaya nga yung ilang, ibang linggong nakaraan, binanggit natin eh. Na itong gospel na ito, eh, yung ika nga, this earth will be filled with the glory of God and that will come forth because of the gospel. And again, the gospel points to a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, who He is and what He has done for us. But we are confident about the gospel. Ayan po yung ginagamit natin, pantawag, na manumbalik yung mga tao sa Panginoon. Siyempre, ang banal na spirito, ang nagbabago ng buhay natin. Ika nga sa theology, regeneration. Pero ginagamit po ng banal na spirito yung gospel. Kaya mananampalataya tayo, nagpipreach tayo ng gospel. Huwag natin ikahiya yan. Kaya sinasabi natin, gospel confidence. Mababago ang mundong ibabaw dahil sa gospel. Ayun nga, yung libro nga ni Pastor Rice Brooks, naalala nyo ba yung sinasabi natin yung the grace effect? The impact of grace? Charity? Di ba? Care for the sick, protection of children, liberty, education for all, abolition of slavery, dignity of life, elevation of women, racial unity, the strong serving the weak. Di po ba na kung naaalala nyo nung nakaraang linggo, binanggit natin, mga effect po yan ng gospel. At yan po ay kakalat sa mundong ibabaw. Imagine mo, nagsimula ang Panginoon sa labing dalawang disipulo. Dumami doon sa upper room, when they were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. At noon sa Book of Acts, makita nyo, libo-libo ang nasisave. Hanggang ngayon, buong mundo ang epekto ng gospel. That's why we, we want to emphasize, if Jesus is our champion, and He is, we emphasize gospel confidence. Ha? Hindi po ito irrelevant na bagay. Napaka-importante po ng gospel. Sinasabi nga natin, eh, of course, uh, a person, again, God is using discipleship. But we say that evangelism is the arrow point of discipleship. Walang mangyayaring discipleship kung walang preaching of the gospel. But then again, we emphasize Jesus our champion and therefore we emphasize gospel confidence. Next thing, Jesus is our world champion. Our emphasis on gospel confidence. Our emphasis on historical optimism. Ayan. 
At ibig po sabihin natin, meron kasi ngayong tinatawag na historical pessimism. Alam niyo yung historical pessimism, yung pasama ng pasama ang mundo? Yung mga iba nga naniniwala ang church is just a chosen few na nasa sulok na ngayon. Sa kasamang palad, ang mas na magnify si Satan. Ha? Let me tell you, Satan is a defeated foe. Ang mahirap ngayon na magnify si Satan para bagang maaring manalo pa siya. <laughs> na para bang tag of war sila ng Panginoong Jesus na magkamali lang breathing ng Panginoon at magkamali lang ng timing ng hatak at mata- maaring matalo. Alam mo yun, you're magnifying uh, Satan and his evil works. Again, I, I don't want us to, to be oblivious of uh, the evil things around us. Kaya nga tayo salt and light. Eh. We want to flush those things out of the society. Pero iba naman yung minamagnify mo si Satan na para bagang siya nananalo. Diba? Kahit sa nun si Satan, eh, nasa COVID. Bagamat gawa niya yan. Eh, yung iba, umu-over na, nasa bakuna. Diba? Diba? Lahat na lang nandun eh, namamagnify. Eh, nakaalala nyo ba yung good works ni Lord? Namamagnify nyo ba? Kaya nga, historical optimism eh. Yung mga pessimist, pessimistic na yan. <laughs> Pero babaguhin natin yung ating pag-iisip. The gospel, I mean, the, the church is winning in history. You should say amen. Ayan po yung ating historical optimism. Okay? Na ang, ang, ang na binabago po ng Panginoong Jesus yung mundo natin. Little by little, again, I'm not saying it's a straight line of slope. And let me repeat, the general direction is upward. But we have this confidence that the Lord Jesus Christ is victorious. Kung kay, si Satan, nasa sa inyo po yun eh. Diba? Minsan, Satan is a defeated foe. Pero pag, uh, if you will allow him to do psychological warfare against you, di ba yung mga lies niya, eh doon ka niya mapupuruhan. Kung baga, maaring secure yung iyong salvation kay Lord, pero miserable naman ang buhay mo kung paniniwalaan mo si Satan, kung si Satan ang magnify mo. Okay? Hindi po, halimbawa, nung 1988, merong sumulat, 88 reasons why Jesus will come in 1988. Eh, alam niyo po, maraming naniwala dun eh. Obviously, hindi po dumating si Lord. But you know, kung pessimistic talaga tayo, eh, darating na si Lord, talo na tayo. Nasa isang sulok na yung church, wala na magagawa. Ang dami na nung trabaho ni Satan na talagang tinatabunan na tayo. Hindi po. We say no to that. Historical optimism. Tataka nga ako pag nagre-report number of cases and deaths ang, ang naka-front. Eh. Eh, bakit hindi yung recovery <laughs> ang nakikita? Again, I'm not trying to to hide ourselves or or or, uh, or uh, ignore the bad things that are happening. I'm saying that we have to be historically optimistic because we have a world to change. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ, but you know, we are being invited to participate. Jesus is our champion. We emphasize gospel con- gospel confidence, historical optimism. And of course, the third one, social responsibility. Tayo po mismo, eh, dapat mag-participate, iniimbitahan po tayo. Gospel confidence, historical optimism. Kaya nga, iba yung mindset natin kung may goal tayo to win the first prize. Sabi nga natin, the first prize is to honor God. Jesus is our champion. He will do it regardless of whether we participate or not. But that's why we're inviting you. Third thing that we're emphasizing, social responsibility. Kaya nga, we need to take part. 
Diba? Be the voice of the oppressed. Be generous to the needy. Di po ba? Ayan po yung ating sinasabi. Change will come not from top to bottom, but from bottom up when individuals who possess the work of the Lord Jesus Christ will spread the life in our society. Ayan po yung sinasabi natin, social responsibility. Alam niyo po, this week, This week lang, I, I received this video from my daughter. Yung akin pong apo, eh, tinutulungan silang mag... Kasi nag-dishwasher sila eh. Tinutulungan magtago nung galing sa dishwasher. Doon sa lalagyan. Eh, yung apo ko, eh, tumulong eh. Gusto niyang tumulong eh. Siguro feeling niya, she, wa- she wants to, to please her parents. She wants to take part. Eh, alam niyo po, minsan-minsan, eh, mas lumalaki pa yung trabaho eh. Kasi, kagaya nun, kinuha, nasa video, kinuha niya yung apat na kubiertos yata yun. Ay, papalakad siya sa lalagyan niya ng mga lalagyan nila ng kubiertos, eh, nabitawan niya pa, di ba? Lalong dumubi yung pupulutin nga niya, sabi ng kanyang mom, no, 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 that's dirty already. Don't pick it up. Dumodobli pa tuloy yung trabaho. Minsan po, ganun tayo eh. Yes, social responsibility. It's not dependent on us. But I'm sure God is, is pleased. God is honored when we participate. There are times that, you know, it could be counterproductive. I hope sometimes. But social responsibility. God will be honored when we do our part. Kaya nga, babalik tayo sa Matthew 5.16, yung sinasabi natin. Our good works will lead to other people glorifying God. Kaya ayan po yung sinasabi natin sa pagtatapos po ng ating Salt and Light series. Because we believe, dito sa Isaiah, balik tayo sa Isaiah 65 verse 17. Na yung picture dito, the post-resurrection age, but leading toward the culmination that's being described in Revelation 21. But it's happening right now. These are imagery. But the Lord Jesus Christ is working toward changing our world. And kaya po natin sinasabi, we invite you to participate. It's not dependent on us. But when we participate, God is honored. God is pleased. Amen? And, you know, sabi nga natin, Jesus is our champion. We emphasize gospel confidence, historical optimism, social responsibility. Actually, marami pa po eh. But we can just cite some, especially those who, that are directly related to our series. But gusto ko pong kakandaan niyo po ito. Jesus, our champion, wants us to be the salt and light of the world, to honor God, which is our first prize. Amen? Gusto po ng Panginoon, tayo po ay salt and light para mag-glorify si Lord. At yun po yung ating first prize. Hindi po tayo ang champion. Si Lord po. Until we reach that point of the new heavens and the new earth. The culmination. The return of the Lord. Which are described in the last few verses or chapters of the book of Revelation. Are you ready? Again, iba po ang mindset. Kapag gusto natin yung ating first prize to honor God. Amen? Let us pray. Salamat po, Panginoon, na kami po ay gusto mong makalahok dito sa social responsibility. Salt and light po kami. Ayan po ang tawag mo po sa amin. Minsan po, nagtataka kami. Totoo ba ito, Panginoon? Pero, well, we, we believe you. 
And I hope that just like Riley, my granddaughter, who's very much willing to participate, yung pagkaganado niya po, I hope and pray that we believers will be will have that same kind of of willingness and excitement to participate in doing our part, being socially responsible, helping the needy, Lord, doing uh, good things, being the voice for the oppressed. Salamat po Panginoon na kami po'y tinawag mo. We believe, Lord, that you are our champion. Indeed, you are the champion. And you are going to change the world. At salamat po for inviting us to participate. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Social responsibility po. Hindi po armed struggle. Ah. Malayong malayo po yun. Hindi po yan nasa kaloob ng Panginoon. Pero, kaya po, kayo po yung aming iniimbitahan. Salt and light. Jesus, our champion, wants us to be the salt and light of the world to honor God, which is our first prize. Let me speak the blessings of the Lord unto you this afternoon. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you.